Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to start working on the legendary quilt and I have finally got this thing onto the quilting frame. I feel like it took several days for me to finally get it on there starting with putting the backing on and I did that halfway and then the next day I finished that and then finally today I've got the actual quilt on top and I have got the batting on and then the backing. So I'm happy to do that. I have decided on the thread, so let me grab that. Okay, so whenever I am picking out thread for the quilt that I'm gonna use, oftentimes, well, pretty much every time, I use this color thread collection. And basically, if I can open it one-handedly, there we go. It's this beautiful collection of threads. And so it's almost like you get to own every thread that they have without having to own all of the colors. And so what I will do is take this and lay the quilt on top of it with the colors that I'm looking at so that I can decide, do those seem to match well enough? So if you had a beautiful color wall and you've been doing this for a long time, you may have a lot of threads already that you can pick from and use. I don't, which is why I use the, the color book. And I like to use different thread colors as well. So yes, I do reuse my thread um, because you should do that. There's no reason to waste it. But it's also nice to see, especially as I am starting out to see different color threads on different quilts and with different styles of fabric to kind of get an idea of what you like. So, you know, I would hesitate to say, oh, just use one color or one type because it can be tempting to do that. Sometimes, you know, like a light yellow, a light gray really can go with a lot of things, but it's so much fun to change colors. So I would recommend doing it. Um, the colors that I chose, because I also had to decide was I going to do this quilt all in one go um, and one color, or was I going to change? And I originally thought that I would actually do three different colors. These are the three different colors that I thought I would do. So the trees that I have end up having like a separate tone. So there's kind of like a, a Kelly green color here. This is actually called Kiwi. And again, this is Glide Thread. That I'm using and then there some of them have that sort of more sage color to them and this of course is called celery and then of course we have the Sasquatch and so I picked out a brown obviously it's a bit hard when picking out brown because they all do kind of look very similar um, but I chose what the one that was the closest that I could match on my color card with the actual browns on the quilt. Also, if you don't wanna put your quilt up there, you might grab some of your scrap fabric that you've got, and that may be a little bit easier to manage than having to lay your entire quilt across, you know, this tiny little booklet here. So that's another thing that you can do is just grab your scrap fabric and lay it there. What I've decided to, oh, the other thing I was gonna do was just to use one of the linen colors that I, already have for the background because the background is this white color. I think I am tweaking that now. So A, that would be th four, four color thread changes, which is a lot of thread color changes for me and not something that I really want to do. So, and even once I got these two green colors, so once I got these, I kind of decided that I really liked the look of the celery. Um, and the reason for that was that the green, the kiwi green is just, it's pretty dark. So it stands out. It's quite bold in that choice. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I mean, some people would really want their quilting to stand out. But in this case, I want it to be kind of in the middle. And I feel like this is going to do a good job at that. The other thing I've decided to do is to use this as the background thread as well. So I have a really fun idea for the background, which I am going to share you with you guys when we get to it. I have to set it up and hopefully it works, but um, I think this will work a lot better. 
I am still going to stick with changing thread colors for the brown portion. So on the tree stumps and all of Sasquatch will be in that brown color. And I don't know if I said, the brown color is cocoa. Um, all of these are glide threads because I love glide thread. And I do have matching Magna Glide bobbins that go with all of these. So what are we gonna do now? Now, we're actually gonna jump into designing this quilt. So I'm, I don't think I'm actually gonna get into quilting this today. I'm gonna go over how I wanna design the this quilt and the separate designs we're gonna do on the trees, and then we will start quilting. So for those of you who are wanting to just watch me quilt, this may not be the video for you. For those of you who enjoy watching that sort of design process or are a beginner in looking to sort of see what I'm thinking about whenever I am looking at a quilt, um, then this may be the video for you. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and jump into this quilt right here and I've already taken the picture and uploaded it onto my iPad and into Procreate to go ahead and draw on this. We're going to go up here and add a layer so that we're not drawing directly on the quilt because then when we erase, we will erase the quilt. And that's not really ideal for continuing to draw on it. The next thing I'm gonna check is the length or the thickness of my line. I do find that this varies between every single quilt that I do. So I could be writing with this change to another one and I need to change the thickness of my line. I don't know, I have no idea why that is. So now, for this quilt, I've already told you guys that I'm going to do something different with the background here. So I'm not going to be doing anything in this background space of the quilt. So the main focus here is going to be on these trees. Now, when I was making this block, or well, when I was making this quilt, I made this tree block and I really liked the outline of the fabric well not outline but i really liked the fabric and the cross hatching that was sort of you know shown off with this fabric and so what i decided to do so this was actually the block that kind of like man i kind of think i want to do some free motion quilting on this quilt because originally my idea had been to use a pantograph across the entire thing you know it's this quilt is going to someone pantographs are really fast, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of time, and not that, you know, there's always that question of, are they quilt worthy? Um, you know, this person that I'm making this quilt for, you know, it doesn't really matter to me whether they're quilt worthy or not. It's a, f a friend, and she wants to give it to her mom, so that's why I'm making the quilt. But, you know, you do go, how much time do you want to spend on something that you're going to give away and probably never see again? You know, that being said, I do think this quilt will be something that they love and that they enjoy. I think the plan is to give it to her as a Mother's Day gift. And so, as you know, all of us mothers out there really do appreciate our Mother's Day gifts and um, cherish them no matter how big or how small they are, I would say most of us still have all of those gifts. So, um, but basically whenever, sorry, back to the block here, whenever I was making this, that cross hatching that is created on this, I just loved that. And I thought that would be so fun to just mimic that pattern. And so basically that's all I'm going to do. I almost don't even need to draw on this to know what I'm going to do here, but just to give you guys an idea of the thought that I would have whenever we're doing this now. And I guess here would be the question, what I'll probably try and do is keep everything as lined up as possible. Um, you know, this is obviously not perfect, and so the line may not exactly match up. For some people, that would probably cause a lot of um, frustration because, again, 
part of this was, oh, well, we'll match it up. Now, it does in some places really match up really nicely, so I think it'll be okay in the long run. And honestly, too, the goal is to have that beautiful sort of, what is it called? Well, it gives that beautiful dimension to the quilt and texture. There's the word. It gives that beautiful texture to the quilt. Uh, and that's what I really liked about it whenever I did this on the Minnie Mouse quilt was I really thought it just gave a really cool texture to the quilt. And doing it on a block that already kind of has that cross hatching, I don't know. I think that's just going to be really cool. Um, and like I said, some of you guys may be bothered if these lines don't exactly match up, but honestly, in certain parts of this, it does really, it's really pretty close, so I think it's going to be okay. Alright, so rather than sitting here and watching me do that entire block and cross hatching, we kind of have an idea of what we're going to do. I think I'm going to do the same thing over here on this quilt, so because there are horizontal lines here, it just seems... Maybe we should go with the theme here and say, okay, maybe we're going to try and mimic some of this pattern that we're seeing. So just doing some horizontal lines across this and, um, you know, I'll probably decide on how close together I want those lines to be based on whenever I'm actually quilting it. But that's my plan for that one. So mimicking the design there. So now let's move on to this quilt so this or this part of the quilt here this tree has that cross hatching design but it's very very close together and i just think that would be a little bit too intense to mimic it so what can we come up with for this one Hmm, okay, so let's see here. We've got this one with the cross hatching. Um, we've got this one here, which has these kind of little stars. You know what might be cool with these? Because it has that sort of plus mark. I know I'm jumping around, and I, I do that when I'm designing a quilt on here. Whenever I am, really, I just sit down and doodle. I kind of have an idea for certain parts of the quilt. So again, like the those last two trees, those were really easy because whenever I was making the quilt, I looked at them and thought, wouldn't that be really cool if you had that design on it? Um, sometimes you have that and then sometimes you don't. What we could do here, and I just don't know, I'd have to do a lot of dot marking, I think. So if we, I don't know if we could do like a, maybe we could do, where we did sort of a similar leaf design here. I don't know, this might be too difficult to accomplish in a <laughs> very weird space on this. Because obviously this is an easy design to do, especially when you have like squares and you're just following those squares, but we're not quite following squares here. So I don't know, this may be a bit weird. Yeah, see that, that line looks really funky. Obviously when we would, be, I would do this with rollers for sure on the quilt. Um, to just keep the spacing a little bit better, but I don't know. Does this look weird? I feel like it looks a little weird. Let's see, let's back out. Oh, I made a line. I don't know, then again from far away, it kind of looks neat and maybe Whenever I'm actually on the quilt, what I could do would be decide what my spacing is going to be. And I think that that would help. And I could do smaller spacing, you know, and go through and just put dots, you know, put a dot and line out the dots that I'm going to put on there with, a, with that blue erase marker, the water soluble one on the quilt. And then I could free motion just go through, you know, 
and do it. If you have the dots, it's always a lot easier. Um, but that, I don't know, this might be kind of cool to do on there. I kind of like this look. So this top look here, once you see it kind of all together, even though it's in that confined space and you're thinking this is going to look weird, I think that looks kind of neat versus, you know, down here it looks kind of crazy and weird looking. But yeah, I think, I think we should stick with that idea. All right, so we'll try that idea out. So there's that idea done. Okay, where to go next? So I think we have this design down here, which is more like a, I don't know, what would you call this design? It's kind of a floral pattern, I think. Let's see, you know what I'm going to do just for the sake of making sure I've done it is I'm going to mark the trees that I have a design for. This way I'm going to mark an X on the ones that I've already designed and already have an idea so that I don't go and redo them again. Or, I mean, I mean, you could, if you're not sure, or maybe you wanna do every single tree differently, you could do that where you go through. But I'm gonna repeat those ideas on the corresponding tree. So now I'm just kind of thinking of what I wanna do. Again, I don't have a plan for these. I don't want to do the horizontal lines again, so we want to do something totally different here. So sometimes whenever I don't know what I want to do next, I'll just outline the block um, until I think of something to try. And you know, we haven't done, we've done a lot of lines, not a lot. We did do those semicircle swirls. so. Maybe another swirl design here, and we could do, let's see, it's got these like little star, these little things, but I don't think I can quilt that. That seems a bit intense to quilt, so maybe doing something completely different. Okay, so let's see. I, why don't we try, I don't really know how to do serpentine lines, but maybe if we did this sort of wavy line coming in and out, which is semi-serpentine-like, um, I might get a similar effect. And I feel like kind of mimics this sort of design that we're seeing here with these waves going through um, and I can do this kind of back and forth and make these as wavy as I want to. Now hopefully I can do this well on the long arm freehanding it but I also think that if you're thinking about a design practicing it with your with a piece of paper with a tablet with something is always so much more helpful than just to me than just practicing it only on the long arm which i know seems a bit counterintuitive cuz you're like well that's where i'm going to do it but you almost get this muscle memory down whenever practicing it on a piece of paper or on like I'm doing on the iPad um, and also providing yourself with these weird shapes helps to sort of give you an idea of where you might get stuck how you would want to get out of a stuck place um, and that I think is really helpful I think that's part of why I've gotten better with um, the ribbon candy is a I have I really like that design so I have used it a lot more um, 
but one of the things is that I just because I wanted to use it a lot more I practiced it so much more on my iPad and drawing it in designs especially on the kite in a square quilt um, where I was just going through and repetitively doing that over and over again on the iPad so that whenever I actually got to the point of doing this on my quilt I felt so much more confident. So I can already see one thing I'm going to have to watch is just the spacing between these like this one here is a little bit bigger then and I feel like they're gradually getting bigger like I feel like these are a lot smaller than these for sure so I'll have to watch that but that's another thing that this is, is just as an example of doing this of okay this is something that I'll need to pay attention to now maybe you like it bigger and you're going maybe I do want to make it bigger but see I feel like that's not as ideal as some of, I think I like the smaller look to it. And so you can kind of troubleshoot this stuff of going, okay, well, how can I fix this, you know? And like that one was really, that's me attempting to fix it and make it smaller right there, just as a heads up, guys. Um, but that's something that I can keep an eye on. And really, the main thing there would just be keeping these lines a lot smaller and not going so big. And I think that will help to, to keep this from getting out of control and getting huge. But, there we go. That's kind of my idea. I actually really like that. It almost... and. I'm not going to get too picky when I'm quilting this if I do get some bigger ones because it almost kind of looks like leaves coming through here um, or like netting. This would be really cool if you had a um, an under the sea quilt or something where you needed netting. That would look really cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to work well for this. So let's see. Let's go ahead and mark off this block down here. So we did do those two. Um, so we've got this one, so we've got this style, this style, and this style. I am, there is a part of me that really wants to just go with the grid lines here. Let's see what it looks like. Because it's kind of somewhat calling me. The only thing I don't know about doing this type of design is I am pretty sure I will not be able to quilt this entire tree in one go on my machine because of the size of my machine. I think that will limit me. So I think that would make this a little bit challenging um, because I'll just have to kind of start and stop these lines rather than being able to do like what I'm doing right now and make it continuous. I guess I can't really be too questioning of is this too on point with the design of the fabric since the whole idea was to mimic the fabric. So I guess this is honestly the most logical answer for this, this tree. Okay, we're just, just going to do a few of these horizontal lines just to see. And I guess what we could do to try and separate it, which I mean it is different than... I guess my big concern is I don't want this tree and this tree to look exactly alike, especially considering they're so close in in space. Um, and again, they're so close in space here again. So that's the only concern that I have with doing this design. Now I could just do straight up and down lines. You know, I've got these, and I don't know that that looks really that bad um, versus... Whoop, my little iPad fell over versus doing this cross hatching design. Now, the main difference here would be that the cross hatching is going to be on square, right? We're going to have this type of square versus down here, it's more of a diamond shape, right? Because it's on point. 
So, there is that difference. I could also vary up the size of it as well if, you know, looking at it, if I felt like these were too close, maybe I do these a lot larger um, and let the other blocks stay the size of the actual quilt because obviously I can't make them as tiny as this design here. I mean, this is teeny weeny. So since I can't do that, then maybe over exacerbating it and making it bigger, you know, doing something along this lines a it would make this block go way faster than doing it you know this little bitty design um, and might give that little bit of difference so i'll think about that maybe doing this larger than than the block down here than this sort of green tree block okay i think we've got that figured out we'll, we'll stay with that so now we've just got the last two trees, make my X over on that block. We've got the last two trees and then we've got Sasquatch um, to design. Okay, so with these last two left, I feel like we have the one obvious idea here, which is, you know, following that pattern like we've been doing with a lot of the other ones. The only thing that I don't like about this idea is just that a lot of the other blocks look very similar to this, you know, so the, uh, if we look at this one right next to it, you have your, your diamond shape, and then of course we have this one that's the square shape. So I don't know if I like the idea of just so many blocks looking very similar. Now, that being said, obviously this is a little bit different just because the spacing is going to be a little bit different um, since we're following a plaid type of fabric. But this would be more on point for, you know, kind of the design that we've been following thus far of trying to sort of mimic the fabric. Um, I'm just not, I'm not decided on it, honestly, for that part. So that would kind of be the look of it, um, just to give an idea of what this would be like. And I've done this before with plaid pattern designs. I think I did it on the red sampler quilt. There was a red plaid pattern on it. And um, just following the design seemed to make the most sense because, I mean, plaid can be a pretty busy design when you're looking at it. So... That's kind of the idea. So it is definitely, you know, I mean, if you look at the plaid one and then you look at the diamond one here and then compare it to the one above it, of course, I mean, there are certainly differences there. And I guess there's part of me that wants to follow that plaid design because that's kind of what we've been doing thus far is trying to mimic the design of the tree. And then there's another one that just kind of wants to make this one something crazy and totally different. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of thinking on that one. Okay, if I can move the page here, we'll go over to the last tree. So, this is the last tree, if we accept the plaid pattern design, to be designed. And I was really thinking about this tree. You know, it's got... A unique design with these sort of flower motifs slash I don't know um, little square diamonds on it but um, it's not really a design that I can necessarily follow directly so I have an idea I'm not sure what it will look like on here but basically it is to do Something really similar to the Christmas trees that I did. If you have seen the uh, the Christmas tree, what is it? The Pinehurst quilt by Laundry Basket Fabrics by Adita Sitar. I did that Christmas tree quilt. And on it, I basically did lines across it very similar to this one, um, where they're just horizontal lines. But... 
in there, I would put a ball to be like a Christmas ornament on it. So my thought with this is since we have these little like fun flower looking things is to maybe do a design where we're drawing those horizontal lines, but when we come to these, we do this flower motif. Um, the only thing I don't know is just how to, this may be like kind of difficult to do. I don't think I'm gonna, I for the center one, I think doing like a circle around it would be a bit extreme. So we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna stick with these bigger ones. And when we come to them, making that little flower motif around them, you know, and maybe we make the lines, maybe it would be easier if I made these lines bigger and not so close together, which actually might not be a bad thing just from the standpoint of a lot of the quilt has fabric that, or has designs that are really close together. So giving something to space out might be a little bit easier um, and especially with this design it may end up being easier so it's a little bit different but it is very similar to the Christmas tree pattern that I did um, where basically you're just drawing a line and then in between that doing these little semicircle ball things. So I'm going to do another line just to give an idea. I do like to do enough of a pattern. So you could certainly, you know, draw this entire quilt and depending on, uh, you know, how big your quilt is, also how intricate or detailed your quilt is, you know, there may be things that you want to practice those designs. Um, I know the last quilt where I was doing a lot of the ribbon candy in between the little designs on the Kite and the Square quilt. I know for me, practicing that ribbon candy in that space was incredibly helpful for me. And so I did actually do that, um, a lot of that quilt. I went through and drew on my iPad on Procreate just to help me to feel more comfortable with that design and to give me, you know, once I started doing it, to give me a better feeling of, of just knowing what I was doing. Um, because I definitely, which I've said before, you know, practicing these designs on your iPad or a sheet of paper or anything and especially doing it in a confined box space like this really seems to just, it's really helpful to give you that muscle memory that, you know, I think is so important for feeling confident in your quilting. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to make mistakes or that things are going to come out perfectly, but, you know, the more that you practice a, a pattern or a motif, the better that you're going to be at it, not only from the standpoint of just it looking nice when you quilt it, but also from the standpoint of, you know, getting out of areas when you get in, into trouble, like when you're going into a really thick corner like that, right? So, okay, so there is this. Let's pull back a little bit and look at this. Um, you know what? I think that looks pretty cool. I am trying to decide because part of me likes down here where I didn't do any lines in between. And I think that that looks kind of nice. It almost seems to get a little overwhelmed in here where I'm doing lines in between. So I may not even do lines in between and I may just leave those spaces open, um, which actually makes the design even easier to do that. Okay. Now what we have left is Sasquatch. And on Sasquatch, one of you guys mentioned doing that you guys, when you did this quilt, you did a heart on him. And I can't remember who the person was that commented, but I loved that idea. I love that idea so much. And so I definitely want to put a little heart on him. 
and then we'll have to decide how we want to design the rest of him. I was thinking maybe something shaggy or scraggly, um, whatever that really means to you. I guess that's not necessarily a descriptor here. So, um, okay. So let's start with the heart because we know, or I know that I want to do that. And I know it's not perfect here, guys, but actually that looks really terrible. Let's just freehand it. I was trying to use, Procreate has that option where if you hold something down, it'll give you kind of like the best design there. So a curve or a straight line, um, but that didn't really work out there. It ended up making it look like a butterfly. Okay, so we've got our heart. Should I do it there? Maybe lower? Maybe in the center? I mean, obviously his heart is not in the center of his body. Or how do I know? I don't know the anatomy of a Sasquatch. Maybe it is. Maybe if we were going to do it in the center, I would want to do it like really in the center. Oops, it did that elliptical line, which makes it look crazy. So when I quilt this, I'm probably going to draw the heart on there first and then quilt over the top of it just because I'm not going to trust myself to freehand a heart on there. Okay, what do you think? Big giant heart right in the center? Or, let's see, we could undo those. We could do like a teeny tiny heart. Like a little bitty baby Sasquatch heart. Right there. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards the little heart. I don't know, you guys tell me. Are you leaning towards the little heart or the big heart? If anybody is still watching this at this point. So I know this is kind of a long video. Um, okay, so then we could do, I feel like he should look scraggly. They have fur, right? Or hair, long hair. I'm not sure since we're talking about a fantastical creature. So I feel like in the pictures they look like they're scraggly. What if we just did wavy lines? I don't know if that looks good or bad. And maybe we could maybe not make it so almost like the like a tree pattern, but less. Almost this looks like a topographic map, I feel like. The topographic map design, which honestly I'm kind of okay with, and also would make it really easy to quilt into all of these spots if we just make it kind of crazy looking. I don't know. What do you guys think? Too scraggly? Go over here and we'll do his knee. Okay. You know what? I honestly think that looks okay. I know that it's not perfect, and maybe some people were hoping to have a more unique design there, but I kind of like that. I wanted it to be scraggly, and if we had a definitive de uh, definition of the word, I guess this would fit it. All right. So that is the designs for this quilt um just to give a close-up we've got this sort of ropey look the the cross hatching square which i think i will do this one bigger than what it looks like on here um this flower here which is probably going to be the hardest one of the whole quilt i'll probably go through and like i did here decide my lines and make marks on that quilt and then sew it. Um, we've got our scraggly Sasquatch with a heart in there. And I think I like the smaller heart than the bigger heart. You guys let me know what you think. What else? Oh, we have got the horizontal lines and we've got the cross hatching on the point. So a diagonal cross hatching 
Um, the next thing I've got next to it is the plaid, and that is just outlining that plaid. I think I'll probably do that. I just can't think of anything else better to put in there. Um, you guys comment below. You know, I mean, I could do like, let's look at this. Sorry, this was supposed to be the end of the video, and now I've just come up with this idea. But you guys, I don't know. Maybe this looks... So outlining the plaid, but basically following it in more of a V shape. I guess the only downside to this is that, well, is that to an extent they all line up, right? So they all connect. So it's not really necessarily totally off center. I don't know, maybe this looks okay. I'm going to do one more. I'm sorry. I know you guys probably were like, oh, thank goodness, the end of the video. And now I've added on this. But I just happened whenever I looked at it, I saw this pop out at me, these little V shapes and thought, what about, you know, I mean, it's a tree. I think I might do this. It kind of looks like scales, actually, like diamond, uh, diamond, dragon scales. I guess dragons could have diamond scales. Yeah, I actually, yes, this is totally the design I'm going to do for this one right here. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to erase this top one. I'm not doing this. We're not going to do that. See, this is why I like doing this on Procreate because poof, that idea is gone. And I didn't have to print off a new sheet of paper. I didn't have to do anything. And we're going to do the diamond scale. Diamond dragon scale. That's what we're going to call that design right there. Um, on the tree. I guess it kind of could look like little leaves as well. Uh, the last design, I believe, is this one, which I think is one of my favorites. The little flower on a rope design here. I think that looks really cool. I am definitely going to stick with the no lines in the middle, and I think offsetting them like they are will work. I know some places are not as offset, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Not at all. Okay, everybody, I know that this has probably been a really long video and I do apologize for that, but if you are still here with me, thank you and I appreciate you hanging around towards the end. I'm gonna tell you guys, the background of the quilt that I'm going to do is actually going to be a pantograph. So this design right here called Baby Feet, um, and I got it from Urban Elements online. This design was originally what I wanted to do across the entire quilt, and I just thought it would be fast, it would be easy, um, it's very, it's got that loopy design in there, so it would be easy to quilt for me as well, um, and not the, you know, perpendicular lines that I struggle with whenever doing pantographs. So, I originally had thought this, and then as I was working through the quilt, I saw those trees and felt like they just called me to free motion quilt them. I felt bad not to use this. And I was mentioning, you know, how I had really thought about using this, but don't know how to use it now. And one of you guys had commented, well, why can't you use both? And that got me thinking, why couldn't I use it for the background? I've done some research on it and I'll show you guys whenever I go to set this up how I'm going to try and do the background of the pantograph with this and basically it's kind of like tracing. So I'll show you guys what my plan is. I don't know if it's going to work for whenever I get to that so I look forward to sharing that experience with you and we'll see if it's a pass or a fail. Um, but as always, I hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for all of your comments. And, um, you know, because just like this, I would never have thought to use this. So I really do read every single comment and I enjoy um, all of them and this lovely little quilting community that we've got. So I hope to see you guys next time and have a great day. Thanks.